in the previous lecture we talked about the transformation of the independent variable with an example for the continuous time uh, signal and we did it for uh, a time shifting time scaling as well as time reversal and uh, towards the end of the last lecture we started with an example for the discrete case and we did only uh, one transformation which is a time shift and that to a time shift towards the uh, left right so we had x of n plus one okay that's the original sequence discrete sequence x of n to which we applied a transformation time uh, which is time shift of x of n minus n naught by choosing n naught to be negative and that made it x of n plus one okay we did it uh, by shifting it one sample to the left so this uh, x of n plus one is nothing but x of n shifted to the left by one uh, unit of n okay uh, so whatever is a zero is happening at minus one what is happening at minus one that is happening at minus two and so on this entire sequence shifted to the left by one is what is x of n plus one now um, we will continue with the next example of this where we will shift it to the right and then we will also do the uh, time scaling as well as the time reversal transformations of the independent variable for this uh, example of the uh, discrete sequence x of n okay so now we will do again uh, x of n minus n naught which is again uh, time shift okay uh, which is basically x of n minus n naught and we are going to choose n naught equal to plus one so n naught in the previous example we chose it as a negative number as minus one uh, and today in, in, in this lecture i'm going to choose this as n naught equal to uh, plus one so when we choose it at plus one we get it as x of n minus one so now because there is a minus sign here in the shift uh, that indicates a right shift by one uh, unit of n okay so the x-axis variable the independent variable is n so we'll have n here also and basically the uh, x of n minus one is going to be uh, x of uh, the what we have on top is x of n the original signal and x of n minus 1 is what we will be plotting here at the bottom so x of n minus 1 is simply going to be uh, x of n shifted to the right because it's minus by 1 okay so this entire sequence will be shifted to the right by 1 so what is happening at minus 2 that will come to minus 2 what is the whatever value is at minus 2 that will go to minus 1 the value at minus 1 will go to 0, the value at 0 will go to 1 and so on, and the value at 3 will go to 4, the value at 4 will go to 5, and so on. Everything will get shifted to the right by one uh, value of the index, okay? So let me mark the uh, x-axis index number. So that's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and we'll also need a 7 here. So I'm just going to mark seven here uh, and similar because it's going to get shifted to the right by one amount. OK, and then we'll have minus one, minus two, uh, minus three, minus four, minus five. OK, so X of N minus one is going to be a right shifted version of X of N by one uh, index number. OK, so what is at minus three that will get shifted to the right by one. So we'll get that at minus two. So we'll have this as minus 2. At minus 2, we'll get the value of 0. What the value at minus 2 will go to minus 1. So we'll have that also as 0. The value that is available at minus 1, that'll go to 0. So this sample will now come to uh, when n equal to 0. So we'll have this line here. And what is at 0? That comes to 1. And the line which is at 1, that goes to 2. The line which is at 2, that goes to 3. The line which is at 3, that will go to 4. And the line which is at 4, which is having half the height, okay? So that's all 1, and this is having a height of half. So whatever is at 4, that gets shifted to the right by 1. So we'll have that at 5 now. So half the height okay so the sample value is half so that's uh, coming at five 
whatever is at uh, 5 that goes to 6 uh, so that's at 6 and the sample value which is at 6 that will come to 7 so we'll have this here at 7 okay so there's uh, not much space here to show on the screen to extend the axis even further so the sample number which is at 6 here that has come to 7 here what is it 5 that has come to 6 here okay so these are the uh, shifted samples of the discrete sequence uh, which is shifted to the right by 1 okay so this is uh, basically x of n minus 1 which is uh, x of n shifted to the right by 1 okay so that's our time shift which we have seen now for the uh, case when it's a plus here so that indicates a left shift and now we have seen when it's a minus here that indicates a right shift okay so we have seen the time shift operation for the discrete sequence x of n now we will repeat uh, this uh, for the same sequence but the transformation the next transformation that we will apply is the time reversal so we're just going to reverse the time axis so whatever is on the right hand side that will all go to the left hand side of the time axis and whatever is on the left hand side that will all come to the right hand side of the time axis so it's basically flipping the uh, time axis or the uh, n axis uh, about the origin or in other words it's as if looking at the sequence from behind the screen okay as we have discussed in the previous lecture as well so we will do the next operation of time reversal so we are going to use the same sequence as before so we have n on the x-axis and uh, x of n in square brackets on the y-axis and we are now going to perform a uh, time reversal okay which is basically uh, flipping the uh, independent variable to minus n okay from plus n it becomes minus n in that case uh, what is going to happen is just uh, it's as if looking at the signal from behind so all these samples which are on the right hand side of the origin they will all get flipped to the left hand side and the ones which are at the left hand side they'll come to the right hand side and obviously the origin is going to be the same okay so we are going to plot uh, x of minus n and so the x-axis is n and we'll also mark the axis values that's 0 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 that's minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 minus 4 minus 5 and minus 6 so what is going to happen now is uh, the right hand side will come to the left hand side so what we have at 6 here that will appear as if it's at minus 6 so we'll have that zero value and at whatever is at 5 that comes to minus 5 and uh, whatever is at 4 that comes to minus 4 so uh, let me mark these heights also that's 1 and that's half right so the half sample now comes at uh, minus 4 so that's here and that's going to have a value of half at uh, n equal to minus 4 at uh, whatever is at n equal to 3 that will come to n equal to minus 3 so that will be a value of 1 sample value 1 so you can draw that a bit straighter okay and similarly at uh, what is at 2 that comes to minus 2 whatever is at 1 that comes to minus 1 0 uh, remains at 0 and what is at minus 1 that comes to plus 1 so we'll have this here and what is at uh, minus 2 whatever is at minus 2 that will come to plus 2 and what is at minus 3 that comes to plus 3 okay so it will be like this so, and let me mark these 
stops also with the circle with the dot so it's clear okay so these all have a height of one and uh, so basically uh, x of minus n is uh, the signal x of n flipped uh, by 180 degrees around the origins or it's as if looking at x of n from behind the screen okay so x of minus n is a flipped version of x of plus n so it's time reversal okay now the uh, important thing that i want you to recall from the previous lecture as well uh, normally when we had uh, When you had a plus here, it indicates a left shift. And if it's a minus here, it indicates a right shift. Okay, but when the time axis is reversed, when we have a reversal, then the opposite rule will apply. Okay, so when we have reversed the time axis, and then if there is a plus x of minus n plus something, then the plus instead of a left shift, it will, it will now mean a right shift. Okay, so uh, the, the plus and minus, the left and right shift, the directions get reversed once the time axis gets reversed. Okay, obviously, because the time axis itself has been reversed now. Okay, and that's what we are going to do next. In the next example that we are, we are going to do, we are going to look at the time reversal and time shift put together. So we are going to have a time reversal and a time shift together in the next example that we are going to see. So we will now see the example for time reversal and time shift. So uh, what, the, what we have here is our original sequence x of n and the second uh, sequence is the time reverse sequence which we saw in the previous slide. Okay, this x of minus n, I have shown it here once again. So x of minus n is here and uh, we are now going to uh, apply some shift as well to this so we're going to have uh, uh, we're going to depict x of say minus n plus 2 okay now normally when you have plus 2 uh, then you would think it is a left shift okay but in this case because the time axis is already reversed uh, the direction of shift in, with a plus will also get reversed. So if it is plus n and there is a plus here, there is a left shift. Now because the time axis has been flipped, the plus 2 now indicates a right shift by an amount of 2. Okay, So you have to be very careful with this. So normally if it's a minus, it indicates a right shift and a plus indicates a left shift. But if the time axis is reversed, the opposite shift will apply. So plus now means a right shift. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to take this x of minus n and shift it to the right by two units, uh, two uh, in, units of the index n, okay? So this entire sequence is going to be shifted to the right by two. So whatever is at three, that'll go right by two steps. So that'll go to five. Whatever is at two, that'll go to four. The value at 1 will go to 3. The value at 0 will go to 2. The value at minus 1 will go to plus 1 and so on. So it's going to be a right shifted version of x of n, uh, the x of minus n by 2. So x of minus n plus 2 is basically a time reversed right shifted version of uh, x of n. Okay, so we are going to shift x of minus n by 2 units to the right. So this zero value at minus six, that will come to minus four. So we'll have this at minus four. The value at minus five will come to minus three. The value at minus four will come to minus two. So this half here, which is at minus four in X of minus N, that will come to minus two in X of minus N plus two. So we'll have it with a height of half, okay? And uh, at minus 1, we'll have a height of 1 because what is at minus 3, that is coming to minus 1 because that is shifted to the right by 2. And the value at uh, minus 2 will go to 0. So this is the value at minus 2. And the value at uh, minus 1 will come to 1. And the value at 0 will come to 2. And the value at 1 will come to 
n equal to 3 and the value that is at 2 will come to 4 so that's having a value of 0 and the value at 3 comes to 5 okay so and I'll mark these dots for these samples as well okay so this is our signal uh, x of minus n plus 2 okay so this is a time reversed and shifted version of the original sequence x of n okay so uh, we first perform the time reversal and then we shifted the reverse version okay uh, the scaling factor here is still one because with n we are not uh, multiplying with uh, any value a greater than one or less than one it is simply uh, minus times one so uh, it's minus one the minus one simply indicates uh, a time reversal without any scaling okay so when you have a time reversal and a scale and a shifting then you can do it in any order it won't it won't affect your result but uh, if you have a uh, a scaling and a shift then you have to perform the shifting first and then the scaling okay that would make uh, that would be the proper way of doing it okay we'll see it with an example so here we have seen uh, the time reversal and time shift together uh, okay so this is time reversal and this is time reversal and time shift okay the, that's time reversal okay which is x of minus n now what is x of minus n plus 2 this is time reversal and time shift okay both the operations both the transformations have been applied to the sequence x of n now okay so so far so good okay because we don't have uh, anything that uh, created the situation where we have to have uh, we, we end up with a number uh, for x of n which is non-integer okay we are just having still integer indices so uh, there is no problem next we will do the scaling factor x of a times n and uh, we will choose the value of a the scaling factor to be greater than one and uh, see what happens okay uh, but before we go into that okay uh, i just want to uh, show to you something this x of minus n plus 2 can be also written as x of 2 minus n right so sometimes we will write the same thing in a different way it's the same thing right uh, this is minus n plus 2 it's 2 minus n okay so basically it's minus n plus 2 so there's a time reversal and a time shift of 2 or we can have it as say minus 2 minus n okay in which case it, instead of a right shift it will be a left shift with a time reversal in this case it's a right shift because uh, there's a plus here okay so uh, that's another way of writing the same thing which is inside the brackets uh, minus n plus 2 is the same as 2 minus n okay so uh, if you're given a question like this you should be able to understand exactly what is going on and you should be able to uh, perform the transformation all right uh, now we will look at the uh, time scaling operation for the discrete time case so we are going to perform uh, time scaling which is let's say x of a times n so uh, in this case i'm going to choose a equal to 2 okay let's set a equals 2 so that means we are going to plot x of 2n okay so uh, our plot is going to have x of 2n and n on the x-axis so 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 minus 4 minus 5 minus 6 okay i've just marked the x-axis as well now what x of 2n does is uh, in the scaling operation it takes of uh, it takes x of n uh, from x of n it computes only uh, the samples which are 2 times n right that is 2 times 0 is 2 2 times 1 is uh, 2 times 0 is 0 2 times uh, 1 is 2 
and 2 times 2 is 4. So that means it is going to only select the samples from x of n which are having uh, which are available at even values of n. x of 2n is nothing but uh, selecting the samples of x of n uh, which are occurring at even values of n that is uh, 0, 2, 4 and put them at 1, 2, 3 and so on. Okay, so uh, x of 0 x in this case here what we have what we the sample that we get at 0 will be the same as this the sample that we get at 1 here will correspond to what is at 2 the sample that we get at 2 here will correspond to what we have at 4 so x of 2n is going to select only the samples which are at 2 times n in the original sequence so that is what is x of 2n so basically uh, x of 2n is nothing but uh, x of n uh, for even values of n. That is for n equal to 0, n equal to 2, n equal to 4, n equal to 6. Those will get selected and it will be placed here. So uh, let me just uh, select a different ink color. So for n equal to 0, n equal to 2, n equal to 4, n equal to 6 and similarly n equal to minus 2. Uh, minus 4 okay in this signal there is no value at minus 4 so it will select only these sample values and place place them at the new indexes of 1 2 3 and so on so what we get at uh, when n equal to 0 it is 2 times 0 so we we'll get for x of 0 okay so at x of 0 we have 1 so we will get that value so we have this one a height of 1 okay and when uh, this new value is, when we have n equal to 1 here, so we substitute 2 times 1 is 2. So we see what is x of 2 uh, in the original sequence. In the original sequence, x of 2 is uh, having a, a sample value of height 1. So uh, that's exactly what we get here. So we are taking this n equal to 1 and placing it here x of 2 into 1 is x of 2 and what is x of 2 in the original sequence that value comes here so when this n is equal to 2 2 times 2 will become 4 and x of 4 in the original sequence is this half value here so that comes right here at n equal to 2 so we'll have this half uh, sample value at n equal to 2 in this case okay and uh, when we have n equal to 3 in this transformed or scaled signal, when n is equal to 3, 2 times 3 is 6. And the value of x of n when n equal to 6 in the original sequence is this value, which is 0. So we'll put that here. Okay. Uh, let me change the color again. So that's what we have here. Okay. And uh, beyond 6, we don't have anything so far n equal to 4 in the uh, transform sequence there is no other signal there's no x of uh, 8 defined here so we don't plot anything the signal is defined only for these index values from minus 3 up to 6 okay so the x of 2n will be defined uh, for a maximum value of uh, 3 so similarly uh, when n is equal to minus 1 okay uh, it will be x of 2 into minus 1 which is minus 2 so x of minus 2 will become the value that we get at minus 1 in the transformed sequence okay so x of 2 into minus 1 that's x of minus 2 in the original sequence x of minus 2 is 0 so we'll have this 0 here okay and uh, similarly when x equals uh, minus 2 uh, sorry when n equal to minus 2 in this new sequence we'll have to put x of 2 into minus 2 is minus 4 so x of minus 4 from here and because we have nothing defined here so there is nothing to be defined here as well so this will be our uh, transform sequence x of uh, 2n okay similarly if it was x of 3n then we'll take every third sample so for n equal to 0 it will be 3 times 0 will get x of 0 for x when n equal to 1 it will be 3 times 1 so x of 3 is this value 
then when n equal to 2 it is 3 times 2 that will be 6 it will be this sample so basically uh, when we are scaling in the uh, in the discrete case is basically like selecting only specific samples and uh, discarding or throwing away the samples in between so uh, when it is uh, 2n we are we are selecting every second sample and discarding the samples or the signal values that are available in between is if it's x of 3n we will start from 0 and select every third sample 0 3 6 9 and so on similarly minus 3 minus 6 and so on so because it's 2n uh, we are selecting every second sample and throwing away all the other samples so uh, the process of scaling uh, with the value of a greater than 1 uh, of course it has to be an integer okay for the uh, discrete time case this a has to be an integer so that's another point you need to remember uh, a should be integer we cannot have a which is non-integer for example we cannot have a as 0 0.5 okay so 0 0.5 times 1 will become 0 0.5 and a discrete sequence is not defined for non-integer values of n right so we cannot have x of 0 0.5 or x of 1.5 so uh, we should have this a to be an integer in that case uh, we'll have uh, um, say uh, if a is 2 it's every second sample if a is 3 it's every third sample if a is 4 it's every fourth sample and so on so uh, the scaling factor a is going to be uh, uh, some integer value and uh, if it is a with a negative sign it indicates scaling with a time reversal okay if it's x if we do it as x of minus 2n it is basically x of 2n and also reversed in time okay it will be uh, reversed in time what is on the right hand side that will be go to the left hand side and what is on the left hand side that will come to the right hand side of the plot okay so um, uh, the value of a the scaling factor for the discrete case must always be an integer as co uh, in contrast in the in the continuous case we could have a scaling factor which is non-integer as well but in the discrete case uh, it has to be uh, greater than uh, it has to be an integer for a start okay and uh, obviously if it's greater than one uh, it is basically called as decimation or because we are throwing away samples or decimating the samples decimating means destroying certain samples so if you look in x of 2n x of 2n is nothing but x of n in which sample 0 2 4 only the odd number uh, sorry the even numbered samples have been selected all the odd numbered samples which is sample number 1 sample number 3 5 they have been discarded we have selected only the values which occur at the even values of n which is at minus 2 which is at 0 that's an even number whatever is at 2 even whatever is at 4 we have selected that right and placed it in our transform sequence so uh, the time scaling for a greater than 1 for the discrete case okay so for the discrete case when a is greater than 1 and obviously a has to be an integer and when a is greater than 1 the process is called as decimation okay and it's called decimation because we are decimating certain samples decimating means destroying certain samples leaving out so we have destroyed sample number one three we have discarded it okay so uh, in this case certain samples are discarded or decimated certain samples are discarded or in other words another word for discarded is i decimated okay that is why the process uh, when we do such an operation uh, this is also called as decimation and again that is something that we use in uh, communication where we want to reduce the sampling rate we want to reduce the samples we can decimate it by a factor of uh, whatever number here we are decimating it by a factor of two in the original sequence if we had 10 samples in the decimated sequence if it's a factor of two we will have half the number only five samples right 
and so on so we can decimate it by any factor so if this a, a was 3 then we'll, cho we'll choose sample number 0 3 6 9 and minus 3 minus 6 minus 10 and so on and because it's 2 we selected 0 2 4 6 and so on and we decimated the odd numbered samples okay so that's the uh, uh, time uh, scaling operation for the discrete time sequence now we will look at the discrete time sequence where the scaling factor a is not an integer so if we don't have a as an integer value then what happens so now uh, let us look at the case where a is uh, less than one and uh, we will see what happens so that's our x of n and our x-axis is n that's having a height of one and that's a height of zero uh, half and the other samples which are uh, marked here which they have a value of zero okay now um, if we had to just as we had x of 2n here which is uh, an integer value and also greater than 1 if we had a value less than 1 what happens uh, let's say we'll choose a value of half you know so x of uh, half n which is n by 2 okay this is also time scaling now basically what we're going to do is uh, we are going to take every half sample basically as we did in the previous case where we multiplied each n by the scaling factor so when you multiply one uh, with two so you get two times one with x of two from here uh, when we had zero two times zero is zero but now you have uh, uh, the n value multiplied with half so let me mark the axis values so that's uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and that's minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus 5, and minus 6. Now, in this case, when we want to plot x of n by 2, so we take this n, so the x-axis here is representing n, so we take this n and substitute in n by 2, so we are plotting x of n by 2 so the a here is half uh, now when n is 0 0 by 2 is 0 so which is basically x of 0 from here comes here when n is 1 x of 1 by 2 where there is no x of 1 by 2 in the original sequence so uh, there is no value for n equal to 0 0.5 in the original sequence because by definition uh, the discrete sequence is defined only for integer values of the index. So we can't have x of n by 2 as such, okay? So uh, in this case, we simply say that uh, we, cannot have, um, uh, we, we cannot have a transformation uh, which is like this. Uh, we, that, that means we cannot plot this. But uh, for more practical applications, we do uh, plot this, okay? Uh, we come up with some convention and plot this waveform by do by following certain rule Okay, so basically what we're saying is in the uh, in the transform sequence when we have n equal to 0 uh, then that corresponds to uh, n by 2 also equal to 0 so that's x of 0 right and when we have n equal to 1 that corresponds to uh, 1 by 2 right so how do we get x of 1 by 2 from the original sequence? There is no x of 1 by 2 in the original sequence. In the original sequence, we have x of 0, x of 1, when n is equal to 1, is x of 1, x of 2, x of 3. So we have x of 1 by 2, okay? We can't have it. So basically, we say that uh, there is you know, there's difficulty uh, when we want to evaluate x of uh, n by 2 or, or n by 3 or whatever okay if this uh, scaling factor okay the scaling factor a equals 1 by 2 here that is uh, because this is x of a times n so a is half so half times n is nothing but n by 2 so when we have a uh, less than 1 then we have a problem okay we can't actually uh, plot this signal so we say that the signal x of n by 2 is not defined okay so it simply does not exist we, okay uh, 
since okay let me write since x of n is uh, defined only for integer values of n uh, x of uh, n by 2 uh, is not defined because when we put uh, x of n by 2 and you, if you want to plot n by 2 you see we are going to end up with uh, trying to find out indexes uh, for non-integer values of n okay the value of x for non-integer value of n so if we if we make more values of n here for example if i plot uh, for n equal to 2 so it's x of 2 by 2 2 by 2 equals 1 uh, which is available x of 1 is available that we have this as our x of 1 now when we have uh, n equals 3 that implies uh, 3 by 2 which is 1.5 so we can't find x of 1.5 there is no value for x of 1.5 and even this x of n by 2 because it's a discrete sequence we cannot have it defined for non-integer value of n okay so uh, in, in a more in a more basic form we say that uh, x of uh, n by 2 is not defined okay but in a more advanced uh, form we can have this defined by following a certain convention so what we notice is that uh, the value of the sequence or the, or the scaled sequence n by uh, x of n by 2 where uh, this is having uh, this is giving us non-integer values so we see when n equal to 0 uh, we have uh, we want to find x of 0 which is available to us when n equal to 2 we get uh, 2 by 2 that is 2 by 2 is 1 so x of 1 so x of 1 is available from the original sequence similarly when n equal to 4 we'll have 4 by 2 which is x of uh, uh, 4 by 2 is 2 x of 2 is available here but for all these odd numbers, when n equal to 1, we get x of half. When n equal to 3, we get x of 1.5. So for half, for 1.5, the original sequence is not defined and neither is this, right? So when we put this 1 in the uh, original sequence, in this transformation, we are getting x of half. And that is not defined. And the convention that we will follow is that when it is not defined, we will just make that value as zero okay so that is what uh, is the rule that we are going to follow so x of half is not defined in the original sequence so when we want to make this transformation for x of half we are uh, going to make it make the value of zero so when we have this n equal to one this becomes one by two is half and that is not defined here so we will just uh, put it as zero and when we have n equal to 2, 2 by 2 is 1, x of 1 is this value, so we'll put that value over here. So uh, whatever values that are undefined, we will make them as 0, and whatever values that are defined, we will take it from the original sequence and put it there, okay? And that is the rule that we are going to follow. But in general, uh, in, a, in a very elementary form, we say that such a sequence is not defined, but... Uh, in a more practical way and in a more advanced way we find a solution to deal with this problem and the solution is that whatever is not available to us or what is not uh, what is considered as undefined we will make the values as zero and whatever is defined and available we will take the values from the original sequence and place it okay and that is exactly what we will do in this example so let us work it out okay uh, we will not just say, uh, we will not simply say that it is not defined, okay? Uh, technically, it is not defined, but we find the way of uh, representing it, okay? And that is according to some rule. And that rule is that whatever is not defined, uh, those uh, sample values, we will make it as zero, okay? So now, when we put n equal to zero in this, in this x of n by 2, we get x of 0 by 2, which is x of 0. 
so i'm going to uh, make those calculations uh, here so n equal to 0 we get x of 0 by 2 which is equal to x of 0 so x of 0 in the original sequence is this one so we will put that for this zero as well so we will have uh, this value for x of zero so when our uh, value of n in the transform sequence is one we get x of one by two so for n equal to one we get x of one by two and that is not defined so when it is not defined because in the original sequence there is no such thing as x of half so so when this n is equal to one we get for x of n by two x of half it is not defined in the original sequence so we will simply mark it as zero because we don't have it and when n equal to two so when n equals two we get x of uh, two by two which is equal to x of uh, 1. So x of 1, uh, so when this n is equal to 2, we get x of 1. We need to find what is x of 1 from the original sequence. So the x of 1 is here. It is having a height of 1, and that will come at 2 here. So we will mark that over here. So that's uh, the x of n by 2 uh, when n is equal to 2. When n is equal to 3, so when n equals 3, n equals 3, we get x of uh, 3 by 2. Again, x of 3 by 2 is not defined, okay? Because in the original sequence, there is no such thing as x of 3 by 2. 3 by 2 means 1.5, right? At 1.5, we can't. We can't have x of n defined for non-integer values of n so for x of 3 it is not defined so we will assign a value of 0 for it okay so that remains 0 and when n equal to 4 n equal to 4 we get x of uh, 4 by uh, 4 by 2 that's x of n by 2 4 by 2 is x of 2 so when n equal to 4 in x of n by 2, we are getting x of 2 from the original sequence. So the original sequence is having x of 2. So that becomes x of 4 here. Okay. So we'll have this, uh, which is also having a value of 1. Okay. So that's x of 4. When n equal to 5. Okay. When n equals 5, we get x of 5 by 2 which is undefined because 5 by 2 is 2.5 so for 2.5 there is nothing defined here so we will make it as 0 and uh, when n equal to 6 so when you put this 6 here uh, n by 2 6 by 2 is going to become x of 3 so x of 3 is this value so that comes to x of 6 okay so uh, that will become our x of 6 and uh, when n is equal to 7 here so when it is 7 7 by 2 is uh, 3.5 that is undefined so that will be 0 when it's 8 8 by 2 will become uh, 4 uh, so for 4 we have this half term here so when n equal to 8 so if we uh, go forward so I'll, I'll just mark it for n equal to 8 here so when n equal to 8 uh, we'll have this half term okay so this term which is having a height of half uh, that will come for n equal to 8 because when n equal to 8 8 by 2 okay 8 by 2 will become 4 x of 4 is this half term so uh, that will be uh, that's all 1 and that is going to be uh, 1 by 2 okay 1 by 2 that's the height here okay so, and similarly when n equal to minus 1 so minus 1 by 2 is again non-integer so it's not defined so we'll get it as 0 okay when we have uh, n equal to minus 2 
minus 2 divided by 2 is minus 1 and uh, when x for x of minus 1 is this value so at minus 2 we will get this sample so we will have this value of 1 okay so that uh, that corresponds to x of minus 1 and when it's minus 3 minus 3 by 2 is minus 1.5 that is also not defined so it will be uh, again uh, given as 0 when n equal to minus 4 minus 4 divided by 2 is x of minus 2 so x of minus 2 we know uh, it is at uh, it is uh, 0 value here so we'll get that 0 here and when n is equal to minus 5 minus 5 by 2 is minus 2.5 there is nothing defined here and when n is minus 6 uh, because minus for minus 5 minus 2.5 is not defined so we'll have it as 0 because whatever is not defined we just make it as 0 and when this n is minus 6 so minus 6 by 2 is uh, minus 3 so x of minus 3 in the original sequence is also 0 it is given the value 0 there so we get the 0 so what we see is that when n is less than 1 we see that the original sequence uh, is getting expanded right here they are closer now it is getting expanded when we had n uh, sorry the scaling factor a which was uh, greater than one the sequences the samples were getting closer you see the signal is becoming compressed and when it when a is uh, less than one the signal is getting expanded okay so this is called as expansion so when a is greater than one we call it as expansion okay uh, in general at in a, in a very basic form we say that this is uh, not defined at all because there are no sample values at non-integer values of n but uh, the convention that we are going to follow is for the sample values at non-integer values of n which are not defined i have marked them as wrong cross we just assign the values of zero okay and in some cases the actual value is itself zero so minus four by two is minus two and that is available here okay all right so uh, the convention is that uh, let me write that down the rule uh, with the scaling okay when when scaling a discrete signal If x of a n is uh, for a n that is a times n okay let me for a times n which is not integer we assign x of a n equal to 0 x of that particular a n uh, to be equal to 0 okay as we have done in all these cases whatever is not defined we make it as 0 okay we make these values as 0 this is 0 this is zero and so on okay so that's the convention we will follow and uh, what that basically gives is you see that the discrete sequence has got expanded it is getting stretched out okay so the sequence has got expanded and this process is called expansion okay and when this uh, scaling factor a is uh, is greater than one and integer then the operation that we get is called decimation whereby some samples are decimated or discarded and um, in expansion nothing gets discarded but uh, the samples get spread out it get, they get stretched out and in between you get some empty samples which is basically having zero values okay so that is the process of uh, uh, what we call as expansion okay now uh, to summarize very quickly what we have seen in, uh, in in all these topics we have seen the transformations of the independent variable okay transformations 
of independent independent variable okay that's in the continuous time in uh, continuous time and in uh, discrete time the variable here is uh, time t the variable here is the index n which we denote in square brackets and we have seen uh, time shift okay for both uh, which is x of t minus t naught and here the time shift corresponds to x of n minus n naught okay and then we uh, did the second uh, operation transformation which is time reversal which is x of minus t and the corresponding in the discrete time is x of minus n and then we looked at the uh, final thing which is time uh, scaling the final transformation is time scaling which is x of some a times t where a is the scaling factor similarly in the discrete case is x of uh, a times n a, a times n so where a is the scaling factor again okay now we can combine these operations and write it as x of uh, some alpha times t plus beta okay and similarly in the discrete case we can write it as x of alpha n plus beta okay the only difference is that in the continuous case uh, the values alpha and beta can be integers or non-integers but in the discrete case the value of alpha and beta has to be integers uh, in fact beta definitely has to be integer uh, alpha if alpha is not an integer then we uh, introduce uh, zero values for the samples that would be undefined in the transformation so for example if it is if it results in x of half it is undefined we, we don't have a discrete signal defined for x of half but uh, we will follow the convention of assigning uh, a value of zero to to samples which are undefined as we have done here okay so that's the important thing that you need to remember because the argument in inside the brackets uh, in the discrete case should always be an integer value okay for non-integer values the discrete signal uh, is not defined that is for the non-integer values of the index okay and the second important rule is that when we have to perform scaling and uh, uh, shifting to the signal the correct and proper way of doing that would be to first perform the shifting and then perform the scaling okay so we will perform the shifting first and then perform the scaling and that that would be the proper way of doing it uh, and and that would avoid also a lot of confusions okay so i will uh, continue with the next topic in the next lecture